Now, from time to time, I, I used to teach on a regular basis, one day a week, in different art schools. Uh, I, I've taught at Campbell School of Art in London, in Wimbledon School of Art, and in practically most of the colleges, or art colleges here in Wales. But I stopped teaching because of the bureaucracy that's involved, and I just don't go with it. But I still have private lessons and you know workshops, and I love teaching. I love being with students and helping them to find themselves. And I never ha ever have told students what to do, because I believe then they'll do what you just told them. They won't think for themselves. And so what I try to do in my teaching is to give students confidence in their own thinking and in their own attitudes and have faith in that and help them to find that faith. Because I'm a great believer that students in all crafts and in all things in life are capable of doing it everything for themselves given the right guidance. So I'm totally against rules. Flexible rules, yes, but concrete rules, no. Because very often people who give you rules are giving the rules they were given. And then, then the, you know, that thing, the danger of disciples come into it. They misunderstood something and hand on the wrong information. So the way I teach is to let people get in there. And for example, when they come down to teach, to get do carving, I just give them a chisel, I tell them nothing. Because I want to find what they do naturally. And I'm surprising how many people will do the right thing or close to the right thing by being left alone. And then I will encourage them to go further. And the best people to teach, and it might surprise you, are young girls. Young girls more than young boys, and certainly better than their parents, because they have no inhibitions. And that's the big, big thing to pet people when they're innocent. T totally innocent, and they're aware of their bodies, and they will, you know, they will respond to their bodies. And I don't know what it is about girls, they do it even more than the boys do. And the boys do it better than the parents. And the wives, when they come down here, sometimes want to do a bit of the carving. And they always do it better than the men. Men are the worst. Because the male chauvinist pig thing gets in the way. And they don't want their wives to do better than them, they're too conscious. So I like to teach, trying to get the consciousness out of their mind, which is very hard work, but I get there. And the reward for me is, as a result of that, is that I produce so many individuals, and that gives me a lot of pleasure. And nobody, and literally nobody that's been taught by me, does anything like me. You know, they're not, they don't become clones of me in any form. And I think that's very important. And often you find people who've been taught by very great people in different crafts. But you can tell, you can see the influence of the mentors, if you wish, in their work. And that annoys me. It doesn't annoy me, it upsets me. Because it stops the self coming through. I always say to students, you know, don't be frightened of making mistakes. Because if you are going to be frightened of making mistakes, You'll never do anything because you make mistakes all the time. So learn to enjoy your mistakes. And I think, was it John Lennon who once said, I think there's no such thing as mistakes, only solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that many students should realize, you know, is to get a problem and solve it. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing I try and do in my teaching is to encourage a student not to worry about the failures, not to worry what, what other people think. Because that usually is their biggest problem. They pack it in because they've done it badly and they're embarrassed by it. And they shouldn't be embarrassed by it. You know, you've just got to go through the learning process and enjoy it. Another thing I th think people should realise is that if you do something, well, let's, let's just put it this way. Most people, when they start doing any creative work, has something in their minds about what they want to do. And they can see this beautiful design, whatever it is, beautiful bit of sculpture, a bit lovely pot, or a bit of lettering, or carving, or whatever. 
and they see this wonderful finished design in their mind and they're thrilled by it. And then they do it and it turns out to be a disaster. Hmm? Because they've seen it with their mind's eye and with hopes and wishful thinking. But when they do it, then they see it with the outer eye, which has no emotions like the inner eye. And then they're unhappy with it. And I tell people, if they're unhappy with their work, they should get a champagne bottle out. Because it's a time to celebrate. And people think I'm nuts when I say that, but I mean it. Because when you do something and you can see mistakes in it, the reason I say that's a period to be happy is because it shows that in your mind you're better than you are down there. And that's something to be happy about. Mm -hmm. Right? It's when you are happy with everything out there is a time to worry. Mm -hmm. It means you've got no more to do. You have nothing else to learn. So I think it's a time to, for joy when you see mistakes because you're much, you're much better than that. And I think that's a wonderful situation to be in.